Excellent. <laughs> or <Sorry. laughs> Whenever you're ready. All right, let's start off with some biking hand gesture trivia. So everyone, feel free to jump in. You should know some of these. I'm going to start with the very beginner and get a little bit more advanced. So, what does this mean? Last. Last. Right. I mean, you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Stop. Uh, stop. 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 Yep. Oh, uh, yield. So this means there's actual uneven ground that's coming up oh. to fellow cyclists. Oh. What does this oh. mean? Oh. Jump around. Oh. I have no idea. So oh, that, take my wind. Yes. So, so that you, yeah. exactly. So when you're biking in a path, that means you're saying to your fellow riders, "Come behind me. This is for your own safety. We're going to start drafting, which I'll get into a bit further. Interesting. So what we've done is we started with some beginning techniques, most of which we all know. What I wanted today to do is bridge us into a little bit more advanced road cycling tips um, and some insights that I learned from my ride to conquer cancer. So what is road cycling? Most of us already do this. So this is how we commute on the seawall. Mary Gav bikes to work. Um, but it is the most popular and widespread form of cycling. Really what you need to take away is that road cycling is any time that you are actually on the main mode of transport. So you are alongside a car, you're, you are moving with traffic, so you are obeying road traffic rules. That's why you have all the signals and you obey the same rules as a car. So that's road biking. So, when did I start really considering road cycling? Last January, it was on my personal <coughs> to goal list to join the Ride to Conquer Cancer. So that was a 150 kilometer bike ride from Vancouver down to Seattle, broken into two days. Before I joined that journey, I was probably a lot like you, commuting on my bicycle meant jump, jumping on the seawall, going from pub to pub, <laughs> going around Stanley Park when I had tourists and friends in. But for reasons four, I want to have a new physical challenge. Um, I also wanted to increase my cardiovascular strength to move before volleyball season and leg strength. I decided why not try road cycling and join the Ride to Conquer Cancer to raise money for the BC Cancer Foundation and to also have a new fitness goal. So my kind of five key insights about road cycling, what I really want to do is share some quick tips um, of how you can feel more comfortable on the road. So hopefully you guys feel more comfortable to jump on your bikes and make it a, an everyday part of your own transportation. So number one, get the good gear. <laughs> um, unfortunately, when you are going to, to when you're going to decide to road bike, it's going to cost some money. And a personal experience of mine is that I decided I was going to use my little hybrid bike to join to go on a journey up to Sunshine Coast. Um, unfortunately, the sizing was wrong, my handlebars were in the wrong position, and I actually had some chronic pain in my hips. So a big thing about road cycling is try it before you buy, but when you are ready to make that investment, do it properly and make sure that you have the funds to do so. It's an expensive sport. Once you invest, you have those pieces for the rest of your life. That piece being your bicycle. So number two, get tight. Um, I, you always love seeing people biking around and you're like, why are they in such unfortunate gear? They've got these jerseys, these tight pants. It's for performance and it's for comfort on the bike. And having gone from wearing my Lululemons on my bike to riding a full kit, the transformation in performance is definitely worth it. So my key pieces that I would recommend to you guys just getting into road cycling would be one, clip and shoes. So that's actually when your pedals are enable you to click in, lock in, so you can build your cadence. Mm -hmm. Two, get a good, comfortable helmet to protect your needle. Three are these guys, which are arm and leg warmers. So they look a little bit funny, but what they allow you to do is get on your bike, start your ride, and then slowly peel off layers. You would have your jersey on, and then have this pulled up, and as you're riding, you're able to take them off and shove them back into your jersey just to keep your cadence going and keep continuing your ride. The fourth one being gloves to prevent blisters. When you're actually on your bike for a long uh, period of time, you'll notice that this pad in your hand gets really sore and the gloves help that. Lastly, the really cool jersey because it's <laughs> meant to be a part of a team. 
Um, and it's also a great way to stash your Vega gels and bars <laughs> and money for your coffee that you're going to have post-ride. So those are some great pieces to have, um, again, to invest in before you jump on your bike. So three, I'm going to give you guys some of the go. Um, I'll give you the very first sentence the captain of my Ride to Conquer Cancer team said to me. Okay, Jacqueline, get in the saddle. We're going to increase your resistance and we're going to increase your cadence. We're going to quickly jump by the L LBS before we start um, before we start drafting. And what I really want you to focus on, in on is staying above the sweeper. I was like, ah, what are you actually talking about? And that's when I learned that there are so many little words and nuances and jargon and biking. Oh, wow. You're probably a really familiar with these from indoor cycling, but the three ones at the bottom are really different for outdoor. So saddle, as we all know, your seat. Cadence, your favorite cycling studio. Cadence is the revolutions per minute. So what is your, your pedal power? Drafting, again, going back to the beginning, that action. So that's when you're creating a dynamic kind of triangle force with a group of cyclists. You're really resisted, um, decreasing your air resistance, therefore becoming a more aerodynamic team. LBS, local bike store. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> rings. So usually a road cycle has two rings. Your first ring is the easiest of gears. And then when you, you kind of click out or change gears into your second gear, um, your second ring, sorry, that's where you have more resistance. So when you're going up a hill, you often you'll hear your captain or lead of the pack saying, first gear, get into your first first ring, first ring. Um, and that's kind of how you know how to gear, uh, gear up and gear down. Four, get the routes. So take advantage of the fact that Vancouver is the most um, bike friendly city in the country and quickly becoming the leader in North America. So City of Vancouver invests tons of money into our own bike lanes every year. Um, and they provide a really great service on the City of Vancouver's website where you can actually go in and route your own maps day in and day out. Another tip uh, would be to ask fellow riders about what their favorite rides are. You want to feel safe and comfortable on your bike. You don't really want to be on busy intersections cruising down Broadway where there's lots of people hooking lefts and rights. So that's a great way to just know where the least trafficked areas are or where you can feel safe on your bike. Um, one for me that my favorite kind of uh, route that I learned this past season riding my bike was the Deep, uh, deep Cove Grind. So taking Second Narrows Bridge where there's a huge bike path that they're building underneath the bridge, doing Deep Cove, which is actually quite bike friendly and coming back that way. If I wouldn't have known that, I would have gone downtown, down Georgia Street, um, and cruised over the same bridge, not knowing that there was that path that was already built for me to use. Wow. Last tidbit for my mobile friendly friends. Um, apps are a really great way to plan routes. So Strava is a great one that tracks running and biking. Not only does it track your caloric expenditure, kilometers, and elevation, it also allows you to build a route that's most used by other riders that are on Strava. Last point. Um, the, like anything, any sport, any activity, it's always better shared with friends. Um, for me, this allowed me to really stick to a training program, so I was able to do the ride to conquer cancer and feel comfortable on my bike for that many kilometers. Um, there are a lot of great local bike groups within Vancouver. I'd like to point you to NEC or MEC, Meetup, and Cycling BC. Um, three great resources that have weekly bike clubs where you can actually go in and check out um, what other riders are doing. And they also offer great beginner courses. So at the bottom here, this is our group. Um, there's a solid group of 10 of us within of the Ride to Conquer Cancer team that row religiously twice a week. Um, so that was a really big enabling factor for me to actually get on my bike and get moving. So, lastly, what I want to leave you with um, is what's your own personal biking goal? For many of us, it's different things. Hair, you know, you're the wind blowing through your hair. <laughs> Exercise, strengthening up your legs, strengthening up your glutes. Maybe it's increasing your cardiovascular, which was something that I was looking to do. Saving gas, perhaps a sustainable initiative. Whatever that is, find that, that pain point for you. Um, and try to get on your bike before, before this big, beautiful summer ends 
and enjoying what, what that sport was to you as a kid, it's still there and it lives. <laughs> Honestly, you get on your bike and it is like an element of happiness. So find one reason um, that sticks with you and get on your bike. And lastly, maybe you will enjoy that experience so much that you're going to join me on Catherine and Landry Gins and I, our team, uh, we're creating a corporate team for the Right to Conquer Cancer next year. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be riding, um, it's, this year was June 2014, next year August. Um, so we're going to start a training group, we're going to have a great kit, so maybe you enjoy the experience so much that you join your team. <laughs> so those are your tips for the right, um, road cycle. Hope to see you on your bikes. Awesome. <laughs> I'm seriously considering how to do it. As long as there's enough training. Well, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If, like, okay, I'm a loss. I think I'm yes. I have a question. <laughs> So, this looks like a great sport, but it looks incredibly expensive to me. Yes. And so, you, did, you really didn't touch on the cost. So, what kind of cost am I talking about for an investment if I wanted to do like Crystal's going to be doing? <laughs> you can spend as much as you want, um, but if you were being some, if you were a little bit more price conscious, mm -hmm. a bike minimally is going to run you used $600 to $800. If you're looking at new, you can spend... One thousand to two thousand dollars, and that's your base cost. That's your hard cost. You have to have a bike to play, so that's kind of your range. Okay. And then from there again, obviously gear, helmet, shoes. Okay. Okay. So I have a question. Couple other questions, which is one: Whenever I see people cycling like this, and yes. I see them like this all the time, and sometimes they're on highway, they're on the highway, and they're on highway one. It looks dangerous to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little scared because I get frightened when I'm on my bike. Is this dangerous or not? It's not dangerous if you know what you're doing on your bike and you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I felt the exact same way when I first started road biking and I was going up the Sunshine Coast like I had mentioned, along the highway, tight shoulders. But if you feel comfortable on your bike and you know your road signals and you wrote your hand gestures and you're with a group, you can actually do it quite safely. Um, I would just say start slow and to get to that space. So start on your local roads, mm -hmm. you know, and then from there bridge to highway driving. And make sure you're with somebody that's also that's also experienced and they can help you kind of show you the roads of how to actually <coughs> bike on the highway traffic. Okay, great. One, two more questions. I find that I had a friend of mine who used those clip things that you're yeah. talking about in the bikes, and she, her foot got caught in the clip, and she ended up breaking her leg. So I, I heard they're not dangerous. The clips are. They're dangerous for juniors. So what you're going to want to do again is ride with somebody who's experienced. Um, and what we did is we started on grass. So you just mm -hmm. it's basically you clip in your feet, you mm -hmm. get going. Um, what you need to do is have a conscious awareness of actually unclipping your foot and stepping down. So my suggestions would be, A, start on grass, and once you start doing it, it it's, it's part of your biking pattern. Mm -hmm. it, it almost becomes innate. Mm -hmm. um, two would be starting at like a studio where you actually are clipping in. Mm -hmm. Mary and I go to a studio called okay. Cadence, and you actually have the actual shoes, so you can have that experience and feel comfortable getting on that bicycle before you're actually on the road or in the pavement. Last question. Yeah. When I bike, I find that usually I have my butt hurts after it's over. <laughs> what do you do about that? If I ride for a long period of time, yeah. I get my it hurts. Saddle sores. Sa I get saddle sores. What do you do about that? I get to show you these <laughs> sexy little things <laughs> that I fretted wearing. Honestly, when I didn't want to wear them, but I had the same experience on my bike, especially when you're looking upwards of one hour. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you get them here. These are uh, the shorts that I wore for Ride to Conquer. Like, they have a massive pad in the middle of them. <laughs> and it feels funny, but they provide such comfort. There's actually air cushions that are in okay. there that get you off of your seat. Right. Yeah, and make sure you're riding on a seat that fits you. I also had um, that first experience where I really learned the proper fit, the lesson of fit. I had a really hard seat, and I really hurt the window back. Yeah. I went to my LDS, my <laughs> and he actually measured my seat bones and suggested a seat that would actually fit me from a comfortable zone. Uh, he measured wow. sitting bones, right, yeah. right. Yes, yeah, so the distance is different for everyone, so for they everyone. have different widths. Oh, okay. I'm done. Okay. <laughs>
kinky. I, when I wrote down, how about the butt pain? <laughs> okay, I'm not so sure about that question, but that I agree. It's a very, it's a very, very relevant question for me. So, how'd you feel? I felt much better. 